In an advanced near future, we meet Catherine Mills, a cyborg working for the Harbinger Corporation. She's working at the factory when she receives a sudden message directed to her mind, showing footage of the robot known as SAR, Study Analyzery Program, experiencing an anomaly at the Harbinger training facility. Catherine reports this to her boss, explaining the unprecedented reprogrammed count of one and a half million in just under one day. Her boss congratulates her on the discovery. Next, we cut to a military base where Captain Damien Books is discussing with one of his men, Drifter, about a training exercise they've been ordered to join. Captain Books, unhappy with the news, approaches the soldier in charge to inquire further, noticing Catherine sitting nearby. He learns that his team has been selected due to their combat experience, but there aren't many left with such experience. Reluctantly, Captain Books obeys the orders, but before leaving, he's assigned Catherine as an additional member of the team. Catherine introduces herself to Captain Books outside and explains that she'll be observing the hardware on the field during the training, being from Harbinger. Captain Books asks her to keep an eye on the team as well, suspecting she might be trying to gather data. Catherine clarifies that Harbinger is a vendor for the military, not the military itself. Despite his skepticism, Captain Books instructs her to keep up with the team and turns off her eye scanner, expressing his discomfort with being scanned. Once aboard the plane, Catherine meets Captain Book's unit, which includes Drifter, Sergeant Rory Robinson, Corporal Robert Cutbill, Lance Corporal Martin Goodwin, Corporal Daniela Hackett, and Corporal Sam Loftus. As the journey progresses, they engage in various activities, with Catherine learning about them through scanning and casual conversation. They're evidently very close friends. She also learns that Bucks has eliminated 18 targets, and that Robinson has tech implants in his eyes. Robinson aims his rifle at her. But Mills disarms the weapon effortlessly with a glance, accessing machines with ease. She even mentions she can fire it remotely while he checks the chamber. As they approach the location, Dukes gives the unit basic instructions, emphasizing live ammo and monitoring. Mills discovers she can't access the global network anymore, switching to the local one. Robinson tells Books that Mills has tools like his own eyes, but Books warns against accessing his brain. The plane lands at an old facility, the door opening for Books. Inside, they find no one around, noted by the soldiers outside. When Books returns, they prepare to move out. Mills asks about ground support, but Books disagrees. They venture into the facility, bantering along the way, then into a forest. Books orders cut Bill to deploy a drone, reminding them to stay vigilant. Once set up, they spread out, with Mills trailing behind. After she sees an unidentified drone among the trees, it doesn't take them long to find the location so they move to get into their positions with Drifter following Mills and asking her to help him out with his boss. Their conversation is interrupted when three strange surveillance drones arrive and stare at them. Drifter is about to aim at them, but Mills stops him. It seems she's trying to gain access to them. Drifter informs his teammates of this encounter. Hackett reports she's found them too. Mills tells Drifter Harbinger made what he calls these new toys, but these ones have been quantum modified. They don't have operators. After Drifter comments on the fact they at least know they're here, we see Books has also found these drones but asks everyone to move on. Mumintlate. Their practice targets finally make an appearance. They're very rudimentary robots. Views designs a plan of attack, and everybody moves to their assigned positions, with Mills once again getting to follow Drifter. After one more glance at the special drone, after a countdown, they attack using bullets, rockets, and explosives, a piece of cake for experienced soldiers like them. The weird drones watch and record their tactics, and Mills decides to follow one deeper into the forest, where she finds a more advanced unit, a SAR. She isn't surprised to see it, but she does get shocked when it turns around and there's blood on its head. The fact she can't access it also upsets her. She does manage to see and download some footage from the robot, which contains images of it shooting people face to face. She closes her eyes, trying to process all this, and when she opens them, the SAR is nowhere to be found. At that moment, a message arrives from their captain, the day is over, they've done well, time to set up camp. Later at night, the team has set up camp and is sharing some more stories, but Mill sits on her own. Drifter can't help watching her, and the others tease him for it, reminding him she isn't even human. They also discuss the fact their targets were easy to get and rather basic technology. Meanwhile, Mill is going through the footage she's acquired when Drifter comes to check on her. He sits by her side and asks her where she had gone earlier. She only says she had to look around. He also asked about communications but just like them, she can't still reach out. Either she wonders why Books isn't talking to him himself. Drifter points out maybe Buk simply chooses not to like her, which Mills thinks it's unfortunate for her considering Duke's killing record. 
but Drifter says those are contextless figures, and that's why Bucks doesn't want to like her. Drifter takes the chance to ask Mills about the story behind her getting chipped. It happened when she was 11, and without it, she had paralysis. Harbinger sponsored it all and cured her. Drifter decides to return to camp a moment later, where he finds Buke staring at Mills. He asks Drifter if she's told him anything, he replies she said she's been blocked off and doesn't know why. Drifter believes her, but Books doesn't. He thinks something's off with both the training and Mills. While everyone gets ready for the night, Mills detects a bunch of drones in the forest. And when she goes to sleep, the strange footage from the SAR appears in her eyes again. Meanwhile, Loftus, who is staying up to keep watch, is approached by one of the drones. He tells it to get out of there, and it does, but then he hears a noise. When he looks up with his gunlight, he finds the SAR coming after him. Loftus starts shooting at it. But we suddenly cut back to camp where Mills wakes up to hear everyone wondering about the unexpected shot noises. Goodwin tells Busey saw Loftus up there, but a second later, he was gone. So, the team starts searching the forest to find him. It's already the morning of the second day when they find their first clue, some blood on the grass. It only takes them a few steps more from there to find Loftus's body, checked against a tree. Cut Bill freaks out at the sight of his friend like this and wants to get out of there. His superiors tell him to shut up as they all get in a defensive position for a possible attack. Mills tells them they're standing on their targets area from yesterday when a drone comes by to watch them. The thing barely stays there a second before leaving, right before Hackett gets shot and killed. Books orders them to move, and they do so, hiding behind trees as a bunch of robots shows up where the unit took positions the day before, which Books notices. He and Drifter take out some smoke grenades and throw them to cover the area with fog. Robots and soldiers start shooting at each other as the unit keeps moving along. Books eventually manages to get closer to the robots, but they strangely back off and disappear when they see him. In the meantime, Cut Bill, who got separated from his team on the run, is trying to contact them to no avail. A couple of drones come closer to watch him before flying away, only for SAR to come out a moment later and kill Cut Bill. Back to the team, Drifter asks Books what he's seen. He explains the robots he's encountered are more advanced than those from yesterday. Their armor is incredibly good since they were able to take a shot from him without any damage. Getting angry over losing his men, he demands Mills to tell him what she knows and to turn those robots off. Mills says that while she's able to see them, she isn't capable of turning them off. There's a programming error, and she's running the possibilities. This gets Books even angrier, but Drifter jumps in to defend her, saying she doesn't know and this is a programmer's mistake. Vex doesn't agree, mistakes aren't efficient. Robinson returns, he had been looking for Cut Bill but only found his helmet. So, the team gets moving again to find him. On their way through the forest, Drifter reminds Books Mills is useful because she can see things they can't. Vex points out that if she sees them, that means they get to see her in return, and therefore they see the team as well. But Drifter says it doesn't matter because they need all the help they can take right now. Books can't stop thinking about the attack and wondering why the robots have let them walk. He thinks it may be because Mills was there with them. She interrupts them to show them something in the forest, a huge amount of dead animals. It seems the robots have been using them as target practice, like Loftus. Suddenly, Mills announces they're being tracked from the ridge, just in time to see more robots show up. They waste no time in opening fire, so the team starts running away as fast as they can. When a particular shot is about to hit Mills, Vex pushes her out of the way and drags her down with him, which causes them to roll away and get separated from the group. Mills hits a tree and passes out. Drifter tries to contact them to no avail, so he tells Goodwin and Robinson to get moving. Night falls. Dukes manages to carry Mills back to the facility entrance and make contact with Drifter. They tell each other of their situation, and when Drifter says they'll go to him, Dukes orders them to stay where they are. It's too dark, and the robots could find them easily. Better regroup in the morning. Some hours later, a drone appears in front of Dukes' location. It swiftly departs, but the captain is already pulling Mills into hiding behind a wall as a SAR approaches them. The robot leans in, compelling Mills to open her eyes to connect with her before departing. It's morning when she finally wakes up, and Dukes informs her she's been unconscious for nine hours. She questions why he didn't leave her, and he responds he doesn't know before recounting the events of the previous night. Mills insists they need to find that robot. When Dukes asks why, she cryptically replies she can't explain, but he orders her to find a way before declaring their leaving. They regroup with the three remaining soldiers. Drifter mentions they weren't tracked, although it would have been easy, considering they were everywhere last night. Mills confirms the coast is clear ahead, and all signals are behind them. They decide to return to the drop point and await transport for extraction. 
Dukes will accompany Mills to the door since she's the only one who can open it, while the others provide cover. The path is clear, and they reach the door without incident. Views attempts to gain entry, but the lock's computer doesn't recognize him, and surveillance drones appear. Mills takes charge of the door, hacking it open, but smoke grenades are suddenly deployed in the area, obscuring visibility. The robots mimic their tactics, and Duke struggles to see. Without time to plan, the robots attack, forcing the soldiers to move. Drifter is shot in the leg just as Mills opens the door. Under heavy fire, the soldiers seek cover, prompting Dukes to assist them. They hold on to each other as they move forward, but Drifter insists they go on without him, providing cover fire for their escape. However, he is shot again, and the SAR closes in on him. Dukes notices and rushes back to save him, with Mills following suit. Despite her attempts to deactivate the robots, she fails, prompting Dukes to shoot Drifter before the SAR can inflict further harm. Mills mourns her friend's loss as Dukes drags her inside the facility. Once inside, Mills confronts Dukes, believing she could have saved Drifter because she designed the robots. The soldiers express confusion at her statement. Inside the building, Mills yells at Pukes for what he did as she is sure she could have saved Drifter. She reveals that she was the one who made those robots. Hearing this, they point their weapons at her and demand answers as nothing makes sense. Mills says she doesn't know why they are here as Marines come here to train but she only knows of the request for them there. She says that she is the one that writes the program and designs the prototypes but the covets have advanced more than they could have imagined. She thinks that if she can understand it, she can control it, but puke since it's too late when Bruce asks her whether the robots are four mills tells them they are their replacements the machines will take over for the human soldiers so no more lies are lost. None of the soldiers like this and Books points out that his men are dead because of her. Mills cries as he leaves the room. They see that the main door is slowly being cut open by the robots. They find another door that says authorized personnel. Goodman is reluctant but they don't have any other options so they order Mills to open it. They go into the dark room and Mills turns the lights on. They find a whole unit of SA or robots. Books tells Mills not to turn them on then orders her to open a new door they may find the bodies of all the facility employees. Mills uses a monitor to connect to the local system however she still can't manage to communicate with the outside world. Pukes points out that the place is a bottleneck and they could slow down the robots from there as the soldiers start setting up charges. Mills leaves the room and locks the door behind her. She activates one SAR and since they are all connected and will know what the other SARs know the robot starts answering her questions. Its orders are to run the human combat program which Mills tries to cancel but she can't it explains that the human training subjects aren't performing as expected so they need new motivated targets and new training subjects the robot identifies who she is and that she doesn't have any clearance and denies or access. Mills realizes it was the Guardian SAR who sent out orders to bring the marines there she asks when training will be complete but the robot says it's unspecified. The soldiers tell Mills to open the door but Mills doesn't listen and tries again to access the units. She isn't successful. The Guardian SAR starts activating the rest of the robots. At the same time, the robots from the outside break in, and the SAR units corner mills from all sides. Robinson manages to force the door open and drags her inside. The robots immediately get to work on cutting open the door. The team returns to the room where Bucks is setting up the charges. The robots break in, and they barely have time to escape before the bomb goes off, which also hits them when they are down. Mills is hit by an electromagnetic pulse, making her notice that the robots carry EMP grenades with them. They all make it outside where they find abandoned buildings, training equipment, and more bodies. While the soldiers are looking at the ruins, Mills enters the tunnel and takes an EMP grenade from one of the fallen robots. Afterward, the men divide the ammunition and take a position for a siege. She watches the footage of her teammates' deaths, which makes her cry but also makes her more determined. While everyone waits for the robots, Bucks checks on Mills and sees the grenade. Mills tells him it should be able to deactivate the SAR, but its range is short, so they'll need a detonator. Hitting the SAR leader should stop all the rest of the units. She also explains that maybe they haven't been killed yet because the robots have pushed them there on purpose for more practice. Bucks points out that the explosion may kill her too, but Mills thinks it's their only option. They spend the entire night waiting, and it isn't until morning that the robots finally come. Mills tells Robinson that multiple signals are coming from the south. Robinson is in charge of drawing them in a spot as a sharpshooter, and Goodwin has the detonators. Robinson and Burke start shooting at them. Mills scans the area to indicate to Goodwin when to trigger the bombs. They manage to shoot down some robots, and Mills continues to guide Robinson and Burke safely through the city. Mills tells Goodwin to activate the bombs, destroying some of the robots. Meanwhile, Robinson is covering for Bucks, who runs to help Goodwin. 
A drone finds Goodwin, and he has to move out. The SAR chases him down. Bucks manages to grab and take him, and Robinson dies while covering their backs. They reach a safe point, and Goodwin says that he has dropped the detonator on the way, so Bucks goes out to retrieve it and finds Mills already there. She picks it up, and as the robots come closer, Bucks tells her to run, but she refuses. So the SAR makes one of the smaller units shoot Mills, but Bucks catches her, allowing her to trigger the grenade. For a moment, it seems all robots have shut down, and Mills is about to as well, but the SAR suddenly wakes up and goes after them. So Bucks drags Mills away. They enter a building, and Bucks starts shooting at the robot. When Mills starts to shut down, she crawls into the room where Robinson's body is. Soon after, Bucks is thrown inside by the robot, and he asks it to finish him, but the SAR won't because of his orders. So it decides to go after Mills instead, who cannot identify her, but when it is about to kill her, she activates Robinson's rifle and shoots the SAR down. Suddenly, the robot connects to her and transfers its information into her brain just before Mills and the unit finally shut down. Hours later, the transport arrives to pick up Bucks, Goodwin, and Mills and get them out of there. The movie ends as Mills' eyes open, which shows the SAR mission protocol has taken over her.